Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is going to be a little bit swift family Robinson because I've never gone live before, so we're going to give it a go today. I've had to set up my laptop as well so that I can actually see your comments because what this video is going to be about, I've got some new plants that have come thousands and thousands of miles all the way from uh, Ecuador um, and I thought I'd do a sort of a live unboxing video. So the video is good. Thank you, Rupert, and the sound's okay as well. Remind me to talk up. So if I turn you over this way, around here, I've got the laptop set up because in a minute I'm going to switch the views around so that um, you can see what I'm doing. And um, as a result, I won't be able to see the screen, so I won't be able to see your comments. But this way I should, even without my glasses on, still be able to see uh, your comments as they pop up on the screen. So bear with me, this might be a bit shaky. Eventually, I hope to be able to sort of create some sort of like super flash um, sort of live streaming event. But at the moment, we're going to be make doing with the old phone. So I hope you guys don't get too seasick. So um, like I said before, this came courtesy of DHL today. Um, they kindly put it in the wood store for me as well, uh, which was really, really good. Because um, usually they have this habit of sort of, oh, you weren't in. So we just drove off and we've taken it back to the headquarters. It's going to be a complete nightmare. So um, they actually left it in the woodshed. So one of the is I'm going to put you down. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on what I'm doing. So hopefully I haven't even unboxed these, but you can see inside. So I, all I've done is open it. Haven't taken any of the plants out, but there's some really cool stuff in here. So hang on a minute. I'm going to put you on this. Right. Okay. Right. Now I should be able to switch you around to the front camera. Like that. It's a bit dark darker than I would have liked. I've also got to plug you guys in as well because otherwise you're going to run out of battery. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now is my head going to be in shot? No, nope, just my chin. Hang on. Try that like that. Okay, so I've got an LED light which is glaring directly in my face. I'm going to have to hold this up as we go through it and we'll have a look um, at each plant, how they've been packaged, which seems to be pretty solid. Now, obviously, these guys come all the way from Ecuador, so as most of you know, those of you who are into orchids, getting a CITES is an absolute nightmare. It's really expensive, it can be like hundreds of pounds to get plants imported into the UK. Uh, so you can kind of get around that. I'm not sure whether it's entirely legal. Equigenera, uh, some of you may know, do a lot of orchid shows. Uh, so they travel all around. I think Alex Portilla is the bloke who owns it. He travels around all over the place uh, doing shows throughout the year. He does the RHS, he does Maven, uh, he does a few of the others as well. And um, what he does is if you put an order in with them early, they'll pack your plants with them, put them in a, I must be a big container on board a 747, flies them into Europe, uh, these ones came from the Curling Orchid Show, which I think was this weekend just gone. Uh, and he'll, he'll, um, I've gone a bit quieter. Okay, Vince, I'll try and speak up a bit. The trouble is, the microphone, if you remember the early days of filming on this, uh, uh, on my camera, on my phone, it was always volume was an issue. So you'll have to bear with me and turn the volume up on your laptop. So anyway, they'll bring them over and then they'll post them via DHL. To you, so you've got um, they basically get around all the sites because as soon as it's in Europe, they can plant it to anywhere within the European Union. Um, unfortunately, that may not be for much longer. So, let's have a look at some of the plants I've got inside here. Thanks, Vince. Okay, so this is my first orchid, um, which I've been really interested in this genus for ages. If I hold it up to the camera, hopefully, you guys are going to be able to see that. Can you read that? Yeah, that's right. It's a poroglossum. Now, some of you, some of you that may know about these, these are fascinating orchids. They've got a really unusual, uh, almost like a trapping mechanism uh, in the flowers. So what happens is a pollinator lands on the flower, and it's actually got like a, a trigger, uh, which is obviously part of the vascular system of the plant. So the insect will land on top of it, and then what happens is it closes on the pollinator, traps it in there, uh, and then forces it to pollinate the plant. After about half an hour, the 
flower opens again, it fills up with uh, vascular fluid and it releases the pollinator and the pollinator can fly off until it finds another poroglossum, gets trapped again and so forth and so on. The pollination process goes on. So we've got one poroglossum uh, amethystinum, I'm going to murder that piece of nomenclature I'm afraid. Let's go and have a look at what, what the next plant is. So uh, I know there's some scaphocephalum in here so we'll have to have a little look. And it is another scaphocephalum. So this is scaphocephalum digital. Hopefully you guys can just make that out there. There we go. Why well don't autofocus on the old phone? And um, I don't know why it's got AV on there. I'm not sure about that. But um, they they basically wrapped in a very small amount of um, uh, of sphagnum moss. Uh, Rupert, no, CITES isn't changing. Uh, it's just that we're leaving the EU. So obviously the impact that's likely to have on the horticultural industry and us guys with importing orchids and other carnivorous plants from the countries in the European Union could be really really bad because all of a sudden you might need to buy a CITES permit to move a plant from France to the UK which is going to be a, well it's obviously going to be astronomically expensive so what this will uh, what sort of impact this will have on the orchid nurseries here in the UK which rely on let's face it most of them rely on a lot of imports from sort of Dutch countries and France I have no idea what it's going to do that's right, <laughs> Rupert, in that case, bye, bye, bye. That's right, I've got the money. I've got three hungry mouths to feed. Okay, so the next one, and it's another poroglossum. This is poroglossum shramii. Hopefully you guys can see that there. There you go. Uh, and again, very unusual shaped flowers. They've got that trapping mechanism. But they like intermediate to cool growing conditions, so they're going to grow really, really well in, scaphos in scaphocephalin conditions. Also, uh, a lot of bulbophyllums and a lot of um, um, oh, my brain. Um, pluritalis, that's the one. A lot of pluritalis are going to enjoy it. Uh, I really hope the orchid nurseries don't go out of business as well, but if you look at people like Roger Hobbs, his nursery has suffered, you know, astronomically, you know, from uh, increased costs in plant production. Uh, companies like Burnham as well, they're probably one of the biggest and best known um, orchid nursery in the UK. And obviously I'm sure they're going to feel the pinch as a result of this as well. So, the last orchids I've got, and I've, when we unwrap these, we're going to have to be super careful that I don't mix these up because they're going to look basically all the same. So if I get the tags confused, I'm, who knows, it will join the myriad of orchids in my collection which I just have no identification for. So, And this one is Scaphocephalum, bit, hang on a minute, I've got to have a look, bit Cristatum, I think that's right. Okay, now it just so happens, the reason I've ordered these from um, Equigenera is it, or Ecuador is like the home of Scaphocephalum and uh, Poroglossum. So, they have an, almost an inexhaustive um, a list of scaphocephalum that you can buy from their nursery and also hundreds of poroglossums. It's fascinating. So I spent ages and ages sort of, um, uh, sort of like going through the list they sent out because I'm, uh, I'm on their mailing list. So before they do these jumps, I highly recommend that if you're into getting really unusual orchids in the UK go onto their website, Equigenera, and uh, join their mailing list because they warn you, they send a warning email telling you they're actually coming to the UK. Who's that? You live close to Lawrence Holes. Well, Lawrence Holes is in Crawley Down, which uh, is very close to Cockthorne, which is where, that's the ancestral home of the lower family. So that's where my whole family comes from originally, is, uh, is Cockthorne, up near Crawley, uh, Crawley Down, Turners Hill, that neck of the woods in West Sussex. I think it's in West Sussex. Uh, so there you go Brody Sale, That's, uh, you found a little bit of history about my family there. What we'll do now is, I'll pick you guys up and we'll go over there into my lovely kitchen which is ever so nearly finished but not quite. We'll get some scissors and we'll open these up. Right. Off we go into the kitchen. You're going to get a, a minor. I've been tiling like a mad thing. So we've got some nice fancy tiles up now. We've got some lights going on. Here's some of my fancy tiling work. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. One thing I have learnt from all this tiling is 
that I hate tiling. It's absolutely awful. For, for those of you who are a bit of a perfectionist, it's like a living nightmare. Trying to get everything straight and level, absolutely horrendous. I'm not very good at it either. Um, but uh, there, uh, there's enough grout behind some of those tiles. <laughs> nice PJs, thanks Rupert. Yeah, it was home from work. Get the kids into bed. And then pyjama time for this, I'm afraid. Hmm, how am I going to do this? Bear with me. I have to elevate you. Because you're going to be too short otherwise. Uh. Only at Oliver's Greenhouse do you get this level of uh, nice tiles. Thank you. This quality and standard of filming and audio-visual work. Which is, I'm sure this is why you guys keep coming back. <laughs> Right, let's get you guys in close and we can open some of these up. Not drinking tonight, no, 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 no. This is why I'm always like this. <laughs> I've got a pint of what looks like gin, but it's just water, I can assure you. Right, let's turn you guys around. Boop. There we go. Right, look at that. Oh, weird, is it like looking into a mirror? Look at that, it's like one of those never-ending mirror things. Okay, let's move that out of the way. Okay, that's a bit much, isn't it? Oh, blimey, make my eyes hurt. I'm not even watching it through the computer. Okay, so the first one, they've been really pretty well packed up by, um, they are tiny, I know. They're absolutely miniature. They managed to fit in such a small box as well. There was hardly any, um, any space. They were really rammed in there, so move some stuff out of the way. There we go, right, let's get some scissors on this and open these guys up. So this is Poroglossum Shramii. We'll have a look and see what this guy looks like. Now, considering the th literally thousands and thousands of miles these things have travelled, I mean, if you think they've come all the way from Ecuador to Curlene, which I believe is in Germany or France, I really should have looked that up before we did this. Um, they've travelled literally thousands and thousands of miles, so they've been packed for ages. So, hopefully, they're in really good... Oh, that's a hefty-sized plant. Ooh... Oh, that's glued down. Bloody masking tape. Oh, no, look, it took the... Oh, I thought it took the... What's it called off? The label off. It looks like salad. I don't think you want to eat it. God knows what it would do to the human body. So this is uh, this is Poroglossum shramii. And it looks really healthy. It looks really, really good. That is big, isn't it? I mean, I expected to see a division of sort of like a third that size. So I'm really, really pleased with that. There we go. So many leaves, yeah, that is, it looks, it does look like salad actually, or a really, really, really rubbish bouquet. Excellent, right, so let's put these to one side before I forget what's what, because that's what I do. Okay, there we go. Let's get a scaphosepalum open now. Okay, so. You may be so rude as to ask the, uh, ask the pounds, Rupert. I'm pretty sure this guy was about 11, uh, 11 pounds. Uh, the most expensive one on here was £12. So actually, it's really affordable. And I think the most expensive bit, standard, was the um, was actually having it posted. I think the posting worked out to be about £8. But to be honest, you're not really going to find these orchids. I, I can't find these orchids, these unusual species orchids, um, in the UK uh, at an affordable price ever. So um, it's worth the splurge every once in a while. And it's not like I buy them very regularly. Dawn wants to see the roots. Hang on a minute. Okay, because they're wrapped in a, they're wrapped in a little bit of sphagnum moss just there, so I'm expecting to see a healthy root system. The other place I, I like to hang around um, is the RHS Orchid Show. I think it's in February this year. I like to hang around on the last day, um, just when Equigenera are packing up, and then um, pick up all the. Oh, sorry guys, funny noise. Please don't cut it. Don't cut what? <laughs> Got to cut the paper. There we go. Right. Let's get the light over here so we can see this bit. Okay, here we go. The plant uh, warranted. Okay, so it's in a really nice bit of nice fresh sphagnum moss. It's a bit. There, there is still some moisture considering it's travelled so far. So let's see what we've got. Mm -hmm. 
So the roots are all oh nice and healthy, nice green root tips. So that's as much of the roots as I can sort of show you guys with this limited filming. They they are healthy. They are they have got some green tips. It's a little bit drier than uh, than I'd like. I think it's a good deal. Um, like I said, there's a good tip for uh, go on the last day of the RHS Orchid show and hang around. And then when this guy's closing up, he likes to just sell off plants really cheap. And it's a great way to pick them up dirt cheap. So that's what I do. Bit of gold hanging around Equigenera. So this is a Scaphocephalum. This is Scaphocephalum Digital. Ooh, just about make that out. Let's have a look. Okay, looking a little bit drier, much smaller leaves. Mm, okay, it's not looking too bad though, considering you've got to bear in mind how far they've gone. These will probably have to go into some extreme hydration techniques. So these will probably have to go inside a Ziploc bag with some wet sphagnum moss before I decide what I'm going to do with them. Because I'm probably going to end up mounting them. An even smaller salad. It is an even smaller salad. <laughs> Right, here we go. Right. There's a little shriveled leaf here, a little, little dead shriveled leaf. Okay. And once again, we've just all wrapped up in sphagnum moss. So I don't want to get the roots out on this guy yet because it's going to need a little bit of care just to ensure that it doesn't... It's not too dehydrated it's going to have to go straight in the greenhouse i think after this so that's scaphocephalon digital pop him over there with the label here's the last poroglossum this is poroglossum amethystinum and as the name suggests it produces really pretty purple flowers with a, with a sort of a really unusual shape it's really nice i know i love mini orchids too the best thing about them is they don't take up much space which is becoming massively apparent in the greenhouse, even at this early stage. In fact, this weekend I'm doing a huge clean out, getting ready for autumn and winter. Now the weather's changing. Everything, all the plants have got to come out and come in the house. I'm going to get the bleach out and give everything a really good wash down. Uh, and also we might be some re slug proofing along the bottom as well, because if I remember rightly, those things were much more prevalent in winter. Can't think why they would, Surely they'd rather stay in the freezing cold temperatures outside rather than coming into my salad box and eating all my orchids. So yeah, this is another little poroglossum, a little bit smaller, but it's got. The, you can see how similar these two are. So this is a scaphocephalum in my right hand, and this is a poroglossum. They are pretty similar, I think. These have got much longer leaflets, a bit like a, a pluritalis. I know. I think it's amazing that they've travelled this well. Let's get this guy unwrapped. I'm going to have to stay up super late tonight and sort of mount and pot these guys anyway. Oh, that was nearly my finger. You might see blood. Blood drawn for the first time on Oliver's greenhouse. <laughs> Shock horror. Yeah, you've seen most of it here, to be honest. <laughs> most stuff. But not blood and gore. Not yet. There's still time. Right, let's get that open there. I love the way they've been packed. It's obviously been packed with some real care. They're not like, you know, sometimes you receive a plant in the post and it's just like half falling out of the pot. It's been rattling around in the box, you know, and it's just, you just think, really, I'm paying sort of £4.50 for postage and packaging here and it's just basically trash by the time it turns up. So this is the other poroglossum here. This is poroglossum amethystinum and it just, it looks lovely. Nice lush green colour. Um, obviously these guys are going to take a little bit of time to adapt to my conditions um, but you know it's nice and cool in there at the moment it's very humid it hasn't dipped below like 85% humidity in the, all of last week so hopefully it's going to not be shocked too much so this is Scaphocephalum bit by Cristatum and I think this one was super cheap I think this was only 10, 10 pounds I think it was really really cheap yes you may ask these have all come from Equigenera I'll show you the tag in a minute. I highly recommend them. They're my favourite orchid nursery. There we go. Oh, it's not going to focus, is it? There we go. All the way from Ecuador. And uh, they've arrived in primo condition. I'm really happy. 
I had to plug my phone in again, otherwise you guys are going to disappear and uh, you won't see the tumultuous end of this video. There we go. It's not really tumultuous, I haven't got anything planned. I'm not going to sort of like run around like a lunatic or anything or jump. There we go. Hi, Andreas. Right, okay, so um, before I lose the tag, let's put that there. Let's get this last one out and have a look. Do -do 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 -do. Almost looks like a Restrepia. This one, it's got much longer stems or longer petioles. Okay, so this is another lovely Scaphocephalum. I'm really getting into these orchids. Scaphocephalum and uh, are really sort of, are just, they're just literally constantly in flower all the time at the moment. All of them are. Uh, every, I've only got, I think I've got six or seven of them now and they're all just constantly in flower. My Gibosum has got like 16 flowers open on it. They've just gone completely mad. What more do you want from a miniature orchid? They're small, they take up hardly any room. They like intermediate conditions. They don't really like the hot, but they just bloom all the time and they have the most unusual shaped flowers. There we go, let's get this guy up. This is the last one. There we go. Just once again, a nice plug of, uh, of sphagnum moss around it. This one looks really looks like, even has little sheaths like a restrepia around the stem. Most unusual. So that is all three. So I think the total amount of money I paid for all three of these orchids, I think came out at about 48 pounds for all of this lot here. So I don't think that's too bad really, to be honest. Uh, do I need any special papers to buy plants from outside the EU? Well, as I was explaining to some of the guys who were watching earlier, technically, yes, especially from places like really far afield like Ecuador, because um, you'd need a CITES permit to import it. Basically, the guys, the government inspectorate will go around, check the nursery, make sure they haven't, there'll be a list of certain species of insect uh, and invasive plants that they really don't want here in the UK. So they have to go and vet the nurseries to make sure that um, they haven't got any of that. And then they get awarded a CITES permit, which basically says that what you're importing is safe to do so. But they're very expensive. But because these were taken from a repertory nursery, into the UK and then sent from there. One of the beauties of being a part of the EU is that we've got free movement of plants um, under the photosanitary scheme, which is like a European-wide uh, way for us to monitor plant imports. So um, that's unfortunately looking like it's not going to be with us much longer, obviously with, with the UK leaving the EU. So um, we'll have to just wait and see. So um, welcome all of you and thank you very much for coming on to my first live um, my first ever live Oliver's Greenhouse live video and an unboxing video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to give us a thumbs up like uh, if you have because that goes really well. And also a big thank you for support as well because um, I haven't actually noticed because I hardly make, I hardly ever take note of it, but I'm actually over a thousand subscribers now, which is crazy. <laughs> Who'd have thought that many human beings would want to, want to have a look at my balding plate as I rattle on about orchids? and how probably not to grow them in the best possible way. So thanks again for all the support. And if you have any questions, I'll stay on for the next sort of couple of minutes uh, before I have to go and deal with all this lot. Uh, and I'll try and answer a few of your questions. So over to you. I have to look over here though, because I can't see them. So. Far away, or I can keep talking at you, or I can go. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Great first live link and you're a natural, ha ha ha. You should do this every time you buy orchids. Uh, we wouldn't have many of them because I don't buy orchids very often. What I was thinking of doing, I was thinking of doing a live feed from the greenhouse as well, just like in the morning or maybe sort of like do like weekly updates, just doing a little live stream from the, uh, from the greenhouse because I get really good um, uh, Wi-Fi reception out there so it would Hopefully the video would look as clean as this if I went out there. So that, I think that would be quite good. I think you guys might like doing some of that. Please keep doing these for unboxing. Any luck with the Biblis? I don't want to talk about the Biblis. <laughs> Nothing as of yet. I keep looking. Uh, some of you uh, may have I've planted some Biblis uh, Gigantia seeds. Uh, and I treated them with some gibberellic acid. Potted them up and was expectantly hoping for some sign of movement or at least some sort of growth to have started by now. I checked the pots earlier as I do, went out to water and checked for the dastardly slugs, which I hate, 
and no signs of anything yet. So what I think I might do is actually do a small fire on them, see if I can do some fire germination on them and see if that helps. So I'll ask a few more questions. How about potting up the live plants? Well, that'd be really boring, I think, Rupert, because it's just potting them up. Um, what are you using at the weekend to fight the slugs product-wise? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to use. That small gap around the greenhouse, I've got some good old-fashioned grip fill, which I'm going to be pumping into any recesses around there. I'm also going to be washing the greenhouse down with bleach on the inside, just a dilute bleach solution, and turning over any rocks and stones in an attempt to find any dastardly slugs before, uh, before autumn really sets in. Uh, also, a bit of um, white wine vinegar in a diluted in a hand spray is pretty good at melting them if you do come across them. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, you've been looking at Utricularia species. I like Utricularia as well, but the unfortunate thing is Utricularia like to grow everywhere other than in their pots. So if you do start growing them, be prepared for constant, incessant weeding. Even down to the finest leaf, you think you've got them all, and it'll pop up sort of a month to two months later. Um, I have actually invested in a utricular reniformis recently, which some of you may be familiar with. It's like a really big semi-epiphytic utricularia that's putting up a new leaf. It's got big sort of round silvery greyish leaves uh, and it produces really, really pretty flowers. So um, I will do an update on that at some point soon. Um, Libby, uh, Thank you, Libby. I enjoy your comments. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you've enjoyed the unboxing video. Remember, don't be shy to comment. I love to have all this interaction with you guys. And um, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. You guys make it. Well, yeah, this is why I do it because it's such good fun. I enjoy it, and uh, the interactions are good fun as well. It's nice to speak to some other adults, um, other than because otherwise it's just the kids and the wife really, which isn't a bad thing. My wife and my best friend, but. Uh, it's nice to also talk to some other human beings outside of my insular existence. So there's not many of us orchid nuts or carnivorous plant lunatics out there. And we're even less understood by the general public, as most of you will be already aware. So it's nice to have some common ground to talk to other people. So without further ado, I'm going to end this here. Uh, once again, thank you very much for coming along. I'm glad that you've all enjoyed it. And uh, I've really enjoyed having you here. Thanks again.